Have you ever wondered why most people you meet are right-handed? It's such a mundane detail about our lives that we rarely stop to think about it. But what if I told you that being right-handed isn't just a modern quirk? It's not even something exclusive to our species. It's a trait that goes back hundreds of thousands of years, and it's deeply intertwined with how we think, how we speak, and even how we survive. Today, we're digging into the ancient origins of right-handedness, how it shaped the way humans evolved, and what it reveals about the incredible complexity of our brains. Let's rewind to a time before written language, before cities, before even Homo sapiens roamed the Earth. Imagine standing in the shoes of a Neanderthal, one of our ancient relatives who lived over 500,000 years ago. They weren't just grunting cavemen. These people had culture. They used tools. And they even cared for their sick and buried their dead. But what does this have to do with being right-handed? A lot more than you might think. Scientists have discovered that Neanderthals, like us, had a dominant hand. How do we know this? They didn't exactly leave behind diaries telling us which hand they used to swing a club. Instead, researchers examined their tools and teeth, yes, their teeth, to uncover the truth. Here's how it works. Neanderthals use their teeth as a third hand. Picture holding a piece of leather in your teeth while you cut it with a stone tool. Over time, this left distinct wear patterns on their teeth. These patterns are lopsided, favoring the right side, which tells us they likely held tools in their right hand. And it's not just teeth. The tools themselves often show evidence of being shaped and used by a right-handed individual. In fact, over 90% of Neanderthals studied showed a preference for their right hand, a percentage eerily similar to modern humans. So why does this matter? Well, this isn't just about hands. It's about brains. The preference for one hand over the other, a phenomenon called handedness, is linked to brain asymmetry. Our brains aren't perfectly symmetrical. The two halves specialize in different tasks. For most people, the left hemisphere controls language, logical reasoning, and, you guessed it, the right side of the body. This connection between handedness and brain specialization is so strong that researchers believe the dominance of right-handedness might have evolved alongside our ability to communicate. Language is one of the most defining traits of humans, and it's closely tied to the left hemisphere of the brain. By studying handedness, scientists can glimpse the origins of language and complex thought in our ancestors. But this raises a fascinating question. Why right-handedness? Why not left? Or why not an even split? To answer that, we need to look at evolution and survival. Picture a group of early humans on the hunt. They're armed with spears, working together to bring down prey. Coordination is crucial. If everyone's dominant hand is the same, it's easier to share tools, teach skills, and even defend against predators. Uniformity could have given early humans an edge, making them more efficient hunters and gatherers. Over generations, this preference for one side, specifically the right, may have been passed down through natural selection. But that's not the whole story. Right-handedness also reflects something deeper, social and cultural development. As humans began creating art, burying their dead, and forming communities, shared practices and traditions likely reinforced the dominance of one side. Think about it. If you're learning to carve a tool or paint on a cave wall, it's easier if your teacher uses the same hand as you. This cultural reinforcement could have amplified the trend over time. Now let's talk about the exceptions. Around 10% of the population today is left-handed, and this was probably true in ancient times as well. Being a lefty might have even had its own evolutionary perks. In combat, for example, left-handed individuals could surprise right-handed opponents, giving them an advantage. Some researchers argue that this rarity, being left-handed in a right-handed world, made lefties more adaptable and innovative in certain situations. But left-handedness also came with challenges. In many cultures, it was stigmatized. Even the word left comes from roots meaning weak or unlucky. This bias persisted for centuries, shaping how left-handed people were treated and how they adapted to a predominantly right-handed society. So what does this all mean for us today? Right-handedness isn't just a random quirk of biology. It's a window into our past, revealing how our ancestors lived, thought, and communicated. It's a testament to the intricate ways evolution shapes not just our bodies, but our behaviors and cultures. And here's the kicker. Studying handedness could even help us understand the future. 
Scientists are using what we've learned about brain asymmetry and hand dominance to explore everything from robotics to artificial intelligence. By mimicking the efficiency of the human brain, they hope to create smarter, more adaptable machines. Right-handed or left-handed, we all carry the legacy of ancient humans in every movement we make. It's a reminder that even the smallest details of our lives, like which hand we use to write or eat, are connected to a vast, fascinating history that stretches back half a million years. So the next time you pick up a pen or throw a ball, take a moment to appreciate the story behind that simple action. It's a story of survival, innovation, and the incredible power of the human mind.